uh, Tammy here. I'm back to lead you through another session. So this time this yoga session is aimed at some of the side areas of the body. So the sides of the waist as well as a little bit in through the sides of the body. That's going to be more strength work. And opening up the inseam of the inner thighs and a bit round the groin as well. So we're, we're going to work into being a triangle. So we're working into triangle pose. So I hope you find this session useful at opening up the sides of the body, but also making you work a little bit harder through the legs for a postural um, alignment. And then we're gonna stretch out the hips towards the end. So I hope you find this useful. If you do, I would love to know. So leave me feedback just um, in the comments below. Leave me a like and um, subscribe to the channel. More videos always coming soon. So enjoy the session and we're gonna get you set up and ready. So you can bring yourself into a seated position to set you up for that roll down to the floor. So bringing yourself slowly down onto the floor. And once you're down there, you can either have the legs bent or straight, whichever feels better to you. Rolling the palms up, maybe letting the arms drift a little bit out to the sides so that it feels like the shoulders can open, the arms can relax and the neckline is nice and long. If it feels like you're not quite straight, maybe reaching the right leg a little bit more and then reaching the left leg, or just that wiggle of the pelvis so you feel that you kind of center yourself. Take a deep breath in and as you breathe out, allow your eyes to close. Let your body settle into your position. Notice if there's any obvious tightnesses, stresses that you're holding in your body that maybe with your next breath, the mere breath you can let them go. That awareness of what you can do with your body just by using your breath. It's almost a learned behaviour that if you're not used to relaxing with your breath that it can take a little bit of thought, a little bit of effort but the more you do it you can recognise that a deep breath in fills the body but as you breathe out you can let everything melt around the out breath. That can be when you're relaxing but it can also be as you're doing things, as you're moving can just help you to take a tension edge away from anything that you do. And slowly starting to deepen the breath, a long full deep inhale and a long, slow exhale. Taking one more. And then just gently letting your head rotate from one side to the other. Bringing that little movement into the neck. And then find your way into centre. Just make a fist with the hands and then spring the fingers open and then let the arms relax. Curling the toes and then opening the toes wide and pulling the toes towards your shins and then letting the feet relax. Slowly starting to bend one leg up and then the other. And at this point, if you feel you want to open the eyes, you can. Otherwise, if you want to still keep them closed, you can. Taking a hug of the knees in towards you. 
a little rock of the pelvis side to side. And then settle into the center. We're going to keep a hold of the right leg, let the left leg lengthen down towards the floor. And we'll hug in towards you. And then draw the left leg back in, hugging the left knee, reaching the right leg out, taking it down to the floor, hugging that left knee closer, drawing the right leg in. Again, just that little hug, maybe curling, hugging in really tight as you're curling the tailbone off the floor. And then imagine that you're trying to be heavy through your pelvis, sinking the tailbone down, like we'll pull your knees away from you. And then if your eyes aren't open already, just slowly bring them open. Let the arms relax down by your sides. Bring the knees into tabletop. We're going to just bring a few movements in just to switch on those core muscles. So as you're holding in through that position, back of the pelvis flats and the ribs on the floor, we're going to take just a single leg stretch. So reaching out, out breath, in on the in breath. Reaching out on the out breath and in on the in breath. So you can choose softer is higher and a little bit stronger is deeper towards the floor. And as you're moving through each position, keeping that awareness into the back that you feel that you are keeping the pelvis flat, keeping the ribs drawn down and in. Taking one more each side. And we're going to go straight into a scissor, keeping a right leg on the left, uh, right, <laughs> try again. Keeping a right angle on the leg and you're moving your thigh away from you as you scissor one leg to the floor and then the other. Ankles can be relaxed. But again, keeping the purpose of that nice, slow, intentional, keeping the pelvis flat and keeping the ribs drawn in. Taking one more each way. And then slowly from there, we're coming back into single leg stretch. But as we do, we're going to take the leg a little bit out to the side. So as you reach the leg out, you're going to reach it out maybe about a 45 degree angle away from you and draw back in. The same applies. Higher, easier, lower, stronger. So it's taking the leg open. And as you take it out to the side again, still trying to keep the back of the pelvis and the ribs in. But then you're also wanting to keep the pelvis centered. So you don't want to roll onto one hip as the leg stretches out to the side. You're trying to keep those tummy muscles in tight to control the movement. And again, taking one more each side. And then slowly, once you've finished, even up on both sides, hug the knees in. And then slowly reset the legs back in back into tabletop position. I think I've lost my teeth. I can't talk tonight. So keep the legs into your tabletop position, bringing the arms up and over towards the floor and then bring them back down by your sides, keeping the ribs on the floor. Take one more like that, lifting up and over and then back down. We're going to stretch one leg out. As the arms go up, reach the leg away and then back in. And again, reach the leg away, both arms up and back in. We're going to do another three each way. So keeping that focus in on the back of the pelvis, being flat, you can choose how far that straight leg reaches away from you. As long as you've got that spinal position in place. And when you're finished through there, give that little soft hug of the knees. And we're going to take a little rock to bring you up into seated. So you can hug on to the back of the legs, a little roll, and then readjust, bringing it on to all fours. And as you bring yourself on to all fours, I want you to find the length through your spine, first of all, so you don't feel like you're too narrow together, nice and long. Wide fingers, take it into your cat cow just to mobilize the spine after that work, just fixing it in place. So out breath to round, in breath to lengthen, drifting from one to the other, little press of the arms, 
It's to help encourage that movement through the thoracic spine. Taking one last one each way. And then find your way into mid position. So we're going to take toes in underneath and we're just going to hover. So that final little bit of ab work, if you like, bringing the arms in. Keeping those arms hugged into the socket and a little hover of the knees. Just holding, we're going to breathe for five. And as you're holding from there, that length stays in the spine. That zip up from the lower tummy, staying in place. Five breaths, keeping the armpits pulling down towards the pelvis. Once you've finished your fifth breath, we're going to walk it back. Taking the weight up onto the feet, letting the body hang over. Let the head go loose, maybe a little nod of the head or a little shake. Letting everything hang loose through the upper body, letting the shoulders relax. Notice if you're holding tension in through the, the tummy. And keep the sense of lengthening. Maybe the weight's a little bit on the heels and you're lengthening the sit bones up. And then we're going to start to build on that. Draw the belly button in, pulling the spine up, pressing the heels into the floor, dragging the arms slowly rising up and as you bring it up take those arms up and over go deep in breath and as you breathe out bring the hands on to the heart center in prayer so we're going to adjust you so that you're at the top of your mat so whether you want to step forward or whether you want to turn around whatever angle you prefer to be at we're going to take a few sun salutation a to start with in breath take the arms up Right breath, passing through your heart center again, lifting the hips as you fold, softening through the knees. In breath, halfway, along through the spine, and out breath, fold. We're going to step both legs in behind, take it into full plank, armpits pulling towards your hips. Take the knees to the floor, lower it down. Lengthening through the legs and tightening up through your quads so you feel the work in the legs. Roll the shoulders back, lifting up the back muscles. And if you're happy to get a little push already, you can. But long spine and back down. Taking it again. We're going to do two more. Okay, roll the shoulders. Lifting. And lengthening the spine as you come down. Again, rolling those shoulders. In breath to lift. Right breath to fold down. On your next out breath, you're going to push away. Take it into child's pose. Round it out, lengthen through the arms, in breath to prepare. And as you breathe out, you're rounding the spine, coming forwards, and then find your length again. Into that box, draw the toes under, we're gonna send it into down dog. If you feel the down dog is too much, you can always come back into child's pose at any time. Lifting those sit bones, knees are bent, so the emphasis is on the work of the arms pushing to open. Now you can take a big deep breath here, and let the shoulders sink into the sockets, pulling them up towards the hips. Taking one or as many steps as you need to, to bring the feet in. Weight onto the feet, in breath to halfway, find that length. Out breath to fold. Reaching the arms behind, find length in your spine, drag the heels into the floor, squeeze the sit bones tight. And out breath, hands to prayer. So we're going to start to feed in a few movements which are building up in towards triangle. So we're going to take a step open to the side and adjust the feet so that they're facing straight ahead. So you can place the hands onto the hips, we're just going to wiggle, okay? So not a highly technical um, yoga term, but we're just going to wiggle the hips. Hopefully all okay. <laughs> So as you're wiggling the hips, we're just trying to get those hip joints moving a little bit better. The sides of the waist are lengthening. You can put a bit of funky <laughs> attitude into it if you wish. So just letting it wiggle. Okay. So then from there, we're going to bring you back into center, keeping the spine long again, passing through that like halfway position. And then take the hands to the floor. Adjust your feet as you need to. If your hands can't reach the floor, you can let the feet go wider so that they can get there. And then allow the arms to stay long and straight. Now from there, you're going to wiggle again. Let the hips wiggle. So it's like you're trying to press that inside seam of the trouser towards the floor. 
wiggling the hips a little bit from side to side. Trying to keep the upper body still. So imagine that where your hands are, your shoulders are directly above. So you're keeping this movement really focused just into the hips. And that should pull the stretch a little bit higher up into the, the inner groin. And then hopefully if the legs are starting to get used to that, soften into it. We're going to allow a slight knee bend, centre the hips, slight knee bend. Take the hands back up to the hips. Press the heels into the floor, long back position, squeeze the butt together and then drive it up. Okay, so we're going to step it in. If you need to heel toe them closer together, we're going to step you back into the front of your mat. So that's just starting to warm a little bit up and loosen a little bit up in the inner thigh. Coming back through, this time sun salutation C. In breath, reach it tall. Out breath, fold. Taking it all the way down. In breath, halfway on the way up, lengthen those sit bones, high to the ceiling and fold. We're going to take the left leg in behind. As it goes behind, you can take the knee to the floor, flatten the toes, press in with that front foot, either hands to the knees or take them all the way up, drawing the body deep into that position, actively pulling. Deep breath in. As you breathe out, bring the hands to the floor. We're going to modify slightly. We're going to bring those hips back just to start to stretch in through the hamstring a little more. We're going to take four rocks through there. So slowly forwards and slowly back. Just starting to get everything opening up through the thighs. Taking that last one, and as you draw back into that hamstring stretch part, we're going to bring that leg in behind and adjust, if you need to, from box to three quarters, maybe even to full position, but lowering to the floor, body stretches forward, legs lengthen out behind, in breath to lift into cobra. And the out breath, press it back, scoop in through the tummy, fold it back into child's pose. You can either stay here or rise and round the spine coming forwards, lengthen the spine, tuck your toes under down dog. And as you get there, again, you can start to pedal out through the legs this time. Start to bring a little bit of length in through the calves. A few times through those wiggles, shoulder blades still sinking down in the sockets towards the hips. And then find the length through both. And then we're going to step that left leg forwards between the hands, take the back knee to the floor. Active through that front foot, pushing in either hands to the knees or rise the arms up long, pressing the hips forwards. And again, as we get there, that deep active breath in and out breath, hands to the floor. Start to float the hips back as you send them back, find that level of stretch that you know feels good and rocking forwards and back, take us through four in total. So finding your depth of hamstring stretch on the way back, we're going to tuck the toes under on that back leg, drive it forward, push it in, in breath halfway, the out breath fold, we're going to roll your spine up this time. So Lifting your sit bones as far as you can go, letting the arms dangle as you lift the belly button, lifting the lower back, lifting the mid back, lifting the upper back, lifting the head, reaching, deep breath in, and then out breath, hands to your heart centre. Again, we're going to take that step to the side. So step it to the side, adjust the toes, find the width that you need to step to, so hopefully not too much fiddling about, okay? And once you bring it into that position, we're going to keep the hands onto the chest this time, a little soft knee bend if you need to, fold and lift the sit bones. Imagine the sit bones are opening wide as you fold. Taking the hands either again to the floor in front of the feet or can you find that straight line in between the feet? That as you pull the body in between, so that if you need to readjust in any way you can, but you're trying to get the body as close between the legs as you feel that you can go. Again, whether it's a soft knee bend or long legs, and once we get there, again, we're going to do that little wiggle. So trying to move the hips, it's going to be a little bit of a smaller range of movement whenever everything starts to tighten more in a full stretch. But how much can you move that inseam towards the floor? So 
Again, the last one to even it up each side of wiggles. We're going to soften the knees a little bit again. We're going to start to lengthen through the back. Squeeze the sit bones together, press the heels into the floor. Rise the body up long and straight. So we're going to keep you in that position for the next minute. And we're going to bring the arms out to the side. And we're going to start to reach through one arm. So that you're bringing a little bit of a side bend, but maybe a stretch down one side of the body and then back in. And if this feels that you need to keep a little bit of a knee bend through that, you can do. So again, that side bend in the body, reaching as far through as you can. And as you drift, noticing whether your hips are moving, can you keep them pretty centered? Again, last one each side. And once you've evened yourself up on both sides, I think I have one more. <laughs> once you've evened it up, coming back in the center, you can bring your hands to your hips and just heavy toe everything back in. Okay. So bring it to the front of your mat again. So we're going to start to come through Sun Salutation B this time, but we're going to be bringing in your standing postures with it. So we're going to be going Warrior One, Warrior Two, and then we're going to start to set up for shaping for triangle. So from there, be hip distance apart, in breath, reaching up long, stretching through every finger, coming down onto the chest, out breath and fold. In breath, you are halfway, and out breath, fold. We're going to lengthen the back muscles, take the arms in behind. So I want these glutes to work. Squeeze the sit bones together, bring the arms up, sink it into chair. Now once we get there, I want you to make sure your ribs back onto your heels, ribs are drawn in. And again, we're going to slowly fold. Send the hips up, take the hands back towards the floor. We're going to do another two of those. Bring the arms in behind, start to press the heels into the floor, sink the hips, squeeze the glutes together. And then slowly, again, fold into the floor, lift the hips up. Arms reaching behind, find length and through your back. Squeeze the heels into the floor, squeeze the sit bones together, sink those hips. And then slowly back down to the floor. We're going to step it all the way behind. If you can, full plank. Otherwise, any modification that we've done so far, as you lower the body, can you keep the elbows narrow, squeezing them together, slowly coming forwards, any version of cobra, wherever that is for you. Or maybe you're ready for up dog. Pulling the chest through. Draw the toes under either child's pose or down dog. You can choose as you find your way to a rest point for three breaths. And then slowly starting to rise up child's pose to box. And in down dog, if you want, you can lift the left leg high. We're going to do the left leg first. Rising it up nice and tall. And then looking forward at your hands, bend the knee in. Nose on the floor, bringing that left leg forwards. We're coming into that crescent lunge. So pressing down through that front foot, rising up. Reaching tall with the arms. And again, as you come up, back knee bent, toes pointing forward. So you absorb and open through the legs. If you need to readjust if that feels too wide, Readjust it to find what feels good, what feels steady. We're going to take you from there into warrior one. So allow that back foot to pivot just around about 30 degrees or so, not too far. Hips still able to face forward with that squeeze turning forwards. Ribs, shoulders facing the top edge of your mat. We're going to open you to warrior two. Open it out. And as we open it out, those back toes can turn to 90. Find that depth on that front leg that you can get to. Reaching long with the arms. So we're going to start to straighten that front leg. Imagine that you're pushing that front hip, you're, sorry, you're pulling it backwards. And then bend again. So again, you're pulling in the back. And bend and deepen. And again, pulling in and back. And then bend and deepen tall, still keeping it back there to keep that length. And then slowly from there, we're going to reach the body forwards. And then back up to straight. And reach the body forwards. 
and back up straight, taking one more, reach and back up. We're going to circle that back hand, turn the back toes, take it into runner's lunge, scoop the leg in behind, you're into down dog or you're into child's pose. If you want to take chaturanga, you can, rising up onto the toes, rolling the spine forwards, finding your length, any version, and then taking it all the way back into either child's pose or down dog, ready for that second side. So if you're in child's pose, you'll be rising into box. If you're in down dog, right leg lifting high, if you take that option. And then slowly starting to draw the leg through, looking between the hands, bringing that right leg through. Again, bend the back knee, rise it up into your crescent lunge. Adjust the position if you need to, if that feels unstable, wherever you need to be. Train track with the feet. Holding long through the arms, all the way through to the fingertips. Take it into warrior one, back foot, heavy plants down, angled out, just about 30 degrees, hip, shoulders, everything trying to face forwards. Again, trying to keep energy in it, lengthening through the legs. Take it into warrior two. Now I'm going to turn around, but as you take it into warrior two, again, find that depth that you need to be in. Whatever feels like it's working the legs to find that extra extra challenge now once we're there so again we're going to go to the leg first of all so you're pressing the leg straighter it doesn't have to be fully straight but you're pulling that front hip back and then deepen again pull it back and deepen and once more pull it back and then deepen we're going to transfer into the arm movement so reaching forwards and back in. So feeling that work with the front leg. So keeping that front knee bent for the meantime. And again, just feeling that extra work as you pull the weight onto that leg. And back into center. Circling that back hand around, bringing it into your runner's lunge again. You can come into down dog or child's pose. You will have that option again for chaturanga. If you're in down dog, again, you can float those heels up, roll the spine, find your length, modify your position, box three quarters are full. Sphinx Cobra or Up Dog, your choice. And then fold it back. So we're all going to pause once we get through your Chaturanga, if that's your choice, into Child's Pose for three breaths. Length through the arms, sink through the hips, tap into the breath. Using the out breath, that consciousness to the out breath, to let everything relax. Maybe that's letting the head rest on the floor, the elbows relax. After your third breath, take a deep in breath, lengthen through the arms, slowly start to round the spine, coming forwards, and then find length in your box. Draw the toes under, send the hips up and back, either a step, Lots of little steps, a lunge, a hop, whatever you choose to do to bring the feet forwards. In breath, find your length. And out breath, fold. Rolling the spine up again, press the heels into the floor and slowly rising up. In breath, reaching high. And out breath, back into prayer. So we're going to take it just from standing to come into those um, postures again to try and take it a little bit further. So at this point, if you do feel like you need yoga blocks to assist you, you keep them handy. But you never know if you want to challenge it a little bit more. Sometimes using the block will take you to another another stage. So we're going to step back. So you need the front edge of your mat. We're going to step back with that left leg. So as you take the left leg behind, we're going to come into warrior, warrior two. So back toes are turned out, arms are reaching, and find that depth. How wide do you need to be to find that challenge in through the leg work? The arms reaching nice and long. So we're going to send that front hip back. And as you do, remember you're pulling the hip back. And I want you to lengthen your spine. So you're reaching through the arms as far as you can go. And then pressing in through that front, front heel, lifting up tall, again, deepen. Find the leg work, deepen into that warrior two. Again, pull it back in, hip reaching back, arm reaching forward. 
those opposition movements to find that extra stretching through that front thigh. And again, deepen the work, come back into warrior two. Press it tall, long leg, reaching through, find that reach with the upper body. And back up. So we're gonna take it into your triangle this time. It's like we're teasing you before you get there. So slowly start to press the leg behind. Remember, you can keep a tiny bend in there if you need to. If it feels more comfortable for you, you can have those toes turned in a little bit more. You can adjust the leg position. So figure out when you go through this where it feels like it's manageable for you. But as you reach it forwards, either take a hold of the leg, or if you have a block, whatever height you need in front or behind the foot, whatever works, and then the top arm up. So you're facing away from that front leg. And whatever depth that you're going to, I don't want you just to kind of sink in and kind of collapse on a straight leg. Maybe even just having a partial knee bend on that front leg will make you work that a little bit stronger. Opening up, spiraling the chest wide. Can you reach your spine any longer? Maybe that brings you deeper. You're pulling that front hip back. You're reaching the head forwards. And wherever you get to with that, we're then going to ground it to the floor in the sense that our legs are returning back into like warrior two. But as you deepen that, can you again find a hand to the floor or to your block in front or behind, but to try to keep that open position. The hips might want to sink behind you. Can you hug them in? Just one more breath here. And then rotate the hands to the floor, freeing that foot. And we're going to bring you into down dog. Pedal it out through the knees. And we'll pause point. And then slowly leveling both heels out. Looking at your hands, whether it's a step, hop or a jump, whatever you want to do to bring yourself back to the top of your mat. Find the weight on the heels, press the heels into the floor, scoop up tummy, ribs, chest, shoulders, deep in breath, reach it tall. And return the hands back down. So depending if you need to switch ends to see your screen, we're going to be working with the right leg this time. So we're going to take it back into your crescent arm. So again, feet around about that distance hip width, whatever feels steady for you. So it's like as you're stepping it back, you're about to go to crescent lunge, holding that position, then angle it out, warrior two. So finding your stability through there, through that control in the legs. So right leg, stepping behind, keeping those arms long, finding that warrior two, whatever depth you need to go to. So first movement, pulling that hip in behind, soft at the knee or lengthened, reaching the body position forward tweak and again keeping it long reaching forward nice and tall and again reaching and tall allowing that knee bend in between to try to find that extra work if you need to, to get that sense of that control pulling the hip back reaching forwards and Finding the depth. So you're always coming back to the leg work. That's what holds your foundation through. So we're then going to start to bring it in to your triangle. So again, as we next pull that hip back, we reach the body forwards as far as you can go. Then take the hand either to the leg. Again, it can be a soft knee bend or not, whether it's to your block in front or behind the foot. And that top arm up. Try and spiral the chest, almost looking up. Balance wise. So, so far nobody's fallen over, but if you want to look at the floor, you can. If you want to look to the side, you can. If you want to look at the top hand, you can. Whatever feels like that, that balance challenge for you. Keeping those hips hugged in. Can you lengthen the spine any further? Keeping that front hip pulling back. And then starting to deepen the bend on that front leg. And as you deepen the bend, whether the hand needs to adjust, is it in front, behind the foot, to find that extra length. And 
Then we're going to take that top hand, bring it down to the floor and squeeze it back into your down dog again. So this time, maybe just allowing your heels to drift to one side to open up the underarm and to the other side. Taking one more each way, lengthening the side body and the other side. I want to bring the knees to the floor and fold it back into child's pose. We're going to pause again for three deep breaths. Again, finding that ability to soften and let go using the out breath. Figuring out what feels tight, what can you release. And then slowly take another full deep in breath. And as you breathe out, start to rise the body up and we're going to bring you into seated. Slowly, we're going to bring you down to the floor. So as you bring it down onto your mat, so we're going to just bring it into a few stretches for around the hips. So hopefully through that the legs, the glutes were working quite a bit, hopefully. <laughs> so from there we're going to take you into your figure of four first of all. So you can choose which side you want to start with. I'm starting with left. So once the foot is up there, cross the opposite knee, flex the foot. If that's enough, or if you need to put blocks underneath the feet to stagger it and bring you up a little bit more, if you can't reach, otherwise you're hugging through that thigh. Right thigh, if your figure four leaves the left leg. And again, as you draw into the position, what do you feel gripping? Anything in particular? Can you breathe into it? What can you let go of? And then slowly releasing. We're going to give that leg a hug, that figure four leg, draw it in, even lengthen the other leg away. And then slowly release onto the floor. We're going to switch it over, taking it over into the other figure four leg. Again, flexing the foot to protect the knee a little bit more, and whether it's the grounded foot onto a block if you need to go a little bit further, but otherwise if you can reach for that hug of the opposite thigh. Again, can you feel that you're gripping? Your hands definitely have to work, but what else can you relax off with? And then slowly, as you release the figure four leg, give it a hug, take the other leg away. We're going to bring you into butterfly. So taking a hold of the ankles or the outside edges of the feet. You can either keep the feet together or you can let them pull apart as you draw the legs closer to you, maybe pressing them a little bit out to the sides. Imagine you're trying to lengthen your tailbone down. And we're going to rise it up from there to take it in to happy baby. So as you bring the shins up onto the vertical, we're going to take a hold either at the outside edges of the feet or maybe the inside heel. If that's too much, if you have a band, then you can pop it across the, the balls of the feet to help pull your, your knees towards the floor. 
with your knees definitely outside the width of the body. Otherwise, I'm not a mission <laughs> of getting towards the floor. But you're in the most ungainly position ever, but we're trying to hold it and pretend it's called happy baby. <laughs> trying to keep lengthen through your spine, trying to lengthen the tailbone down. Hopefully feeling something stretching in and around the groin and the hips. We're going to transition from here. We're going to come into pigeon from here on our backs. So draw both knees in for a hug, just to soften the legs down. And again, if it feels good, a little rock or maybe a few circles. And our pigeon from here, we're going to try to keep the spine pretty long again. So you can choose which leg you're going to start with. I'm going to start with my right one this time. Right hand to the right knee, as if you're trying to press that knee towards the opposite shoulder. Using your left hand somewhere to the outside edge, or again, if you need a strap around the foot to take a hold, as you're kind of steering lever through the foot. Keep the foot flexed so you're not just kind of like rotating at the ankle. And as you're pulling the leg knee towards the opposite shoulder to bring in that outer hip stretch, and then whatever angle that you bring the foot to, Whatever angle you bend the knee, trying to bring that foot towards the floor to bring that stretch into that outer glute. If you feel that's not quite enough, you can always start to straighten the grounded leg. That will increase it a little bit more. So again, find your edge, find where it needs to be to, to feel that, um, that comfortable discomfort. And then keeping a hold of that foot, you're going to bring it towards the groin. You can use both hands towards that foot and the ankle. And then you're going to try to encourage the heel to stay close, maybe taking a hold of the toes, trying to let that right knee, if it's the right leg that's up, trying to let it pivot towards the floor. The full end position on this, which I'm certainly not able to do, that knee would almost be beside my other knee. My hips, sadly, don't work that way. But if you're able to let it drop into there, let it drop. Actively encouraging it to release again, using the power of your out breath to help relax whatever feels that it's tight or it's gripping. If you feel you've been able to relax into that, then slowly release the foot. We're going to take a full body stretch in between, reaching everything out nice and long, opening up through the hips, maybe just noticing any difference in sensation between the two legs, and then floating the arms down by your sides. So bending the legs up. So whatever leg you need to switch to then for doing figure of four. So I've started right leg on mine, so on to left leg if you've stayed the same with me. Again, that flexed foot reaching through if you need to give it that little bit of a hug. And it's just kind of building back up through again. So trying to get that sense of opening up through the hip with that little bit of a precursor coming into it. Whenever it feels like you're starting to settle into that position, I'm going to start to bring you into your pigeon. So again, you can take a hold of the leg. So left hand to the left knee, starting to press it open. You can float that right foot to the floor, pressing the left knee towards that right shoulder, taking a hold of the right foot using it as your steering rod to take it across. So wherever the leg needs to be, trying to draw the foot more towards your, your right, your left foot towards your right hand and your right shoulder. And again, if you need to add in more, then you can start to lengthen out through 
that other leg so that it squares you off. So even though there's a pull across the body, try to keep the hip grounded. So the more you pull that across, keep the hip grounded and use the other part of the leg as if you're pulling it towards the floor. If you imagine pigeon, when you're lying on the mat, your leg is across your body. So trying to keep it to there to get that stretch in the outer hip. And then slowly, if that feels like you're starting to settle into that position again, you can adjust the hand position, the foot, taking around the outer toes, drawing the foot in towards the, the groin and into your centre. And then can you encourage the knee to drop? So the foot, keeping it bent in, so that full knee bend, and then trying to let the knee drop towards the floor, towards the knee. And as you feel, hopefully, that leg has been able to settle a little bit deeper into that position. You can free it up. We're going to bring you into that full body stretch. Again, reaching nice and long. Maybe again, noticing whether it's a different sensation or maybe you start to feel a little bit more even now through the legs and the hips. We're going to bring you in for shoulder bridge, just as that little that realignment, recentering. Heels underneath the knees and that slow pivot through the pelvis, rolling up. And again, finding length as you roll back down, taking two more. And as you find your way back down again finding length if there's anything that you feel your body needs to do before we take it into your shavasana you can do if there's any particular movement that you want to go through but otherwise we're going to set you up whenever you're ready into your shavasana whether that's with legs bent whether it's with legs straight again find your way in your own time whether you need pillows or props as you draw yourself into your rested position, you can gently allow your eyes to close. We're going to revisit the breath. Knowing that your breath is consistent. We don't have to think about it, but when we do, and it brings it into your consciousness. You can use it for that purpose again to release tension if you're aware of it. Maybe if you don't feel tension in the body, but just as a whole, can you let the body go and let it sink into the floor? waves of relaxation on each out breath that sweep over the body to leave you feeling warm and relaxed. Making yourself aware of those changes that you can feel just by using your breath. You know through your session you've worked muscles, you've wriggled, you've wiggled, you've moved, you've stretched, you've lengthened. 
and the body hopefully feel better for that the mind also feels better you've showed up you've done something good for the body and let the breath calm it all down Start to deepen the breath. Taking that deep breath in and let the breath pour out. And again, deep breath in through the nose and pour it out through your mouth. Taking that final breath. breath return to normal and slowly starting to bring a little movement into the fingers and the toes and when you're ready just slowly starting to bend one leg up and then the other and again if you feel you need a movement before bringing yourself onto your side then you can take that movement you can keep your eyes up closed or whenever you feel ready to you can slowly start to open them and in your own time slowly pressing it up using that top arm and the top leg to press and reach and then bringing yourself into a comfortable seat Bring your hands onto your heart centre, showing your own appreciation for your own body, that you've moved, again you've wriggled and wriggled. And slowly bringing your chest towards the floor, that final little stretch. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you for joining me for this session. I really hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you again on your mat soon. Feel free to follow us through any more of our sessions that we have online and every week we're adding more. So make sure you have subscribed to the channel to be notified of those and uh, I hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching and thanks for taking part.